What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745. The new Spec Ops has finally been released and I just want to go ahead and go over a few things. Basically just taking a first look at Spec Ops 16 and I'll also add any additional information I have. But first, this amazing graphic is brought to you by Jameson at AJ Designs. So I just wanted to quickly thank him. And now we'll get into the overview. When you first look at the Spec Ops screen, you can see that the Epic Boss is in Mission 1. And I can tell you that the required deployments are Havoc, Colossus, and Spiral. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the taskbar items and weapons. The first blueprint is for the Sinister Crystal, and it does have 2,870 offense and defense. So those are pretty decent stats, and you may want to go ahead and socket those, especially if you're a free player or someone who's newer to the game. This is how I used to have my armory bonuses. I would just use whatever the newest item from the Spec Ops was. So after you research this item, it is a cheap and easy way to socket your armory. Next we have the first weapon on the taskbar, and it is called Ansaba Nur's Liberator. So basically this is Apocalypse's Liberator, and it has Brutal Strike and Exploit Shields. So this is a pretty nice weapon right here. It will definitely help out against someone like Rescue, or anyone with Resurrection like Nico or Sabretooth or Deadpool. Next we have Apocalypse's Subjugator, and it has Brutal Strike as well and it also exploits protection and shields and causes off balance. So once again this is a really nice weapon and if you don't have too many limited edition weapons or anything like that you'll definitely want to try to pick these up. Then we have our first item from the set and one thing that you'll notice about these items is they all have four seals so they unlock new abilities if other pieces of the horseman set are equipped. If this is the only item you possess it's going to put Opportunist, so any one or combination of those debuffs, and it also is stealthy. But if you have two pieces, you'll get pressure points. If you have three, Chaos Shot, and four, Nano Plague. So just imagine a stealthy attack that puts all those debuffs on every enemy. I have to admit I'm sort of intrigued by this set, and I definitely want to try to get as many pieces as possible. And we will take a look at the other piece that's available for gold in just a moment. But first, we're going to move on to the character that you can get once you complete this Spec Ops. And of course, that's Iceman. So let's go over to the recruitment section and get a closer look. Alright, so here's the regular version. And then he has two Horseman alternate costumes. They come in a Blaster and a Bruiser. Iceman comes as a Bruiser. He has Organic Ice. Immune to burning, chilled, and pyrophoric, and he reduces damage from most fire and ice attacks by 50%. Then he also has the Dead of Winter. The next time Iceman is KO'd, he is restored to 10% health, clears all debuffs, and gains absolute zero. And the interesting thing about this effect is it can be applied three times. So Iceman may be a pain to kill, I'm really not sure yet. Moving on to his abilities, his first one is called Chill Out, and it looks like a snowball attack, but it has Cold Snap, attacks against chilled targets are guaranteed to crit, and deadly crits, so it deals extra damage on critical hits. Then his level 2 has a pretty funny name, it's Ice Capades. It causes chilled and disabled on all enemies, so the next action executed becomes locked out for 2 rounds. So that's pretty interesting and at least it hits all enemies. It also counts as a melee ice attack. So right there with his level 2 you can get chilled on all the enemies at once. Next his level 6 is called Cold Feet. It also causes chilled but on one enemy. It causes frozen so cannot dodge most attacks. And exhausted. I really wish you could put exhausted on everyone at once. But I guess I'll take what I can get. And then his level 9 puts a buff on your entire team. It's an ice wall, a shield effect which absorbs incoming damage. And Iceman also gains Dead of Winter. So that's one way to start stacking that buff. But it does say it has a 3 round cooldown. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at his death alternate. 
and I do want to mention that it looks like this costume is going to be earnable. So I'm sure that should give us both classes as well. There's going to be a separate taskbar which starts with collecting Death Frost Shards. But don't worry, I'll cover that task list later on. Right now I'm only on the first part of it. This alternate costume, besides looking amazing, has a few different passives. First off, it has Death and Taxes. Iceman has a chance to attack when an enemy with Chilled attacks or is attacked. He also has Organic Ice and then Reaper of Souls, so he gains Dead of Winter when an enemy is defeated. That should definitely help him apply it three times. And then, just like the other Horseman alts, he does have some variations of his abilities. His level 1 is called Snowball's Chance. It has Brutal Strike, Cold Snap, and Deadly Crits. His level 2 is called Cold Day, and it has Disabled, Stun, and Death Frost. So he's going to place Death Frost on all the enemies, and it counts as Chilled, and then he also has a chance to stun everyone. It's a 40% chance to stun, but it is on all enemies. Now that's pretty awesome right there. Now moving on to his level 6, it's called Freezes Over. It places Death Frost, Frozen, Exhausted, and now this time it has Fatal Blow. And this makes sense since he is the Horseman of Death. Then the Horseman's level 9 is called Ninth Circle. So it's a guaranteed hit, it's stealthy, has True Strike, and places Doom and Despair on the enemy. Those are both incredible debuffs, so this is an awesome looking level 9. And the fact that it's stealthy, I really love that. Now like I said earlier, we will look at the 64 gold item, and I'll give you my quick opinion on it. I'll also briefly go over the new costumes for other characters, but I plan on having separate videos for each character. First things first, this is called the No Mercy, and it is a sword that has Exploit Opportunity, and causes pain. But you will notice it has four seals. So if you have two pieces of this set, it also gains Paragon Exploiter. If you have three, it also gains Exploit Attrition. And with all four, it's going to be a guaranteed crit. What this means is this weapon can do a ton of damage. We're talking serious one-hit potential. So I will tell you that I am interested in this weapon. If I can manage to get some of the other pieces, I may buy it. If I do, you'll be the first to know and I'll definitely make a video using it. Now just taking a quick look at the Horseman of Famine, you can see it's Rogue, and she does have a few different things. She has something called Scarcity, so apply Shortfall to all enemies, removing one beneficial status effect each turn. And she also starts with Infiltrator Power. So I'm really interested in this part, the fact that she'll start countering enemy attacks, increases damage dealt by 30%, and most importantly, her attacks become stealthy. And by the way, she remains a generalist, so she's a generalist that has infiltrator powers, at least to start the battle. And then the second form starts with blaster power, so her single target attacks ignore defense and are guaranteed to crit. Both of these costumes are really nice because her abilities are changed slightly and then she has those powers so she basically gains benefits without having to deal with the weaknesses. Next we have potentially my favorite horseman, the Horseman of War. It's X-23 as a scrapper and she starts with Warbringer so she gives all your allies War Frenzy. Her other class is a Bruiser. But yes, you can gain War Frenzy from using X-23. That's pretty amazing. And then the last horseman is Beast as Pestilence. And Beast just has a ton of stuff. I'm really liking him as well. He comes in Infiltrator and Tactician. First he has Bleak House. After any enemy attacks, he has a chance to make all allies next attack a guaranteed crit. Catch 22, he gains a bonus to attack on any turn he does not attack, and it goes away when he does attack. Then he has Fausti and Bargain. If his allies have any of those debuffs, they'll go ahead and apply those effects when they attack. And then Paradise Lost suppresses most effects 
which prevent or remove debuffs. So that should definitely affect people like Rescue, and I'm going to see if it works against the Mystic Shroud. To me it sounds like it should, so we'll go ahead and check that one out. And I do have enough to buy one of each costume, and like I said, I will bring you a video on each character. First up is probably going to be either X-23 or Rogue. And throughout this weekend and next week, I'll bring you a ton of videos on Spec Ops 16. Everything from the Horseman alternates, to the missions, the task list, and even the epic boss. So make sure you subscribe to see all future updates. That's going to be it for our first look and overview. I want to thank you all for watching and ask you to please like and comment. Good luck, take care, and I wish you the best of luck in Spec Ops 16.